Hi guys, this is JasonO.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the brand new OnePlus Nord 2 5G. It's finally here and it's a mid-range phone which can fight flagships. Also the first contact with one of the most powerful MediaTek CPUs on the market. MediaTek Dimensity 1200 AI, a 6 nanometer chip made by TSMC. We have here a special version of the box, the one for the press which includes three extra cases aside from the actual box of the phone. This is the actual box of the phone and the device has just been unveiled. It's still pretty fresh. So let's take a quick look at it. Starting with the cases first, once again, this only came for the press version. We have a regular black one, a gradient one going from orange to uh, light blue. And this one with the urban design, which looks, looks pretty cool. It has a slight uh, jeans vibe, blue jeans, something like that. Or the notebook of a teenager. And here we are with the actual box. In it, we have a version of the phone. This one is called, let's see here, Blue Haze. That's the beautiful hue we have. Uh, it's kind of a tribute to the predecessor, which also had a pretty nice shade of blue, if I remember correctly. Even though the backside feels a lot like a OnePlus 9, especially the camera area. It feels like a pretty light phone, which is easy to handle and rotate with one hand. I'm going to fire it up. Don't worry, it's already been set up, so we won't waste any time. Now, inside the box, let's see what other accessories we have, because it's quite a tall box, so there should be a few. First of all, an extra case. This one you're getting. It's transparent, flexible and quite resilient. A bit uh, thicker than usual. Here we have the key used to access the slots. Also safety information. Quick start guide. And also a message from the team behind the OnePlus Nord. And then we have the charger, which is pretty hefty. It comes with a USB-A connector and warp charge 65, which means it charges up the phone at 65 watts. Should be able to juice up the device from zero to 100% in 30 minutes. And here we have the cable going from USB-C to USB-A. And that's pretty much it inside the box. Now back to the phone itself. We have it here available in the blue haze version, which also combines blue with a bit of green. There's also an extra green woods version and a gray Sierra one. Now, in case you're wondering what the materials are here, we have uh, glass at the back, glass at the front and plastic in between them. And you can see here the power button. You can see on the left side, the volume buttons. And here we have the famous uh, mute switch which has been available for a while now. As the device has just been powered up, we are required the code. And what you're seeing here is the Fluid AMOLED 6.43 inch screen. The handset measures 8.25 millimeters in thickness and weighs 109, excuse me, 189 grams. It feels pretty light in the hand and pretty grippy. Should be decently easy to handle by the average user. Let's turn up the brightness just a little bit and go further. Aside from what you're seeing here, aside from the 6.43 inch screen, we should probably also mention stuff like the support for the Full HD Plus resolution. And it doesn't come alone. We're also getting a 90 Hertz refresh rate. So if you go here, you should be able to find it at some point. Uh, aside from the AI resolution boost, AI color boost and more screen refresh rate. It's already set from the factory to 90 Hz, but you can set it to 60 Hz to save some battery. Now, if you go inside the phone, there's a surprise. I would even call it the selling point, not identified by CPU-Z, but identified by AIDA, is the new MediaTek Dimensity 1200 AI. It's a special version made for OnePlus. Uh, the basic uh, MediaTek Dimensity 1200 can be found on the Oppo Reno 6 Pro and the Redmi K40 Gaming Edition, but this one, once again, is a special one. Now, this OnePlus Nord 2 will be available in several versions with 6, 8 or 12 gigs of RAM, LPDDR4X, we have the one with 12 gigs of RAM. And storage is either 128 or 256 GB, UFS 3.1 and there is no micro SD. 
the battery is a 4500 mAh unit. Let's actually check it out here. So once again, 4500 mAh unit with 65 watt charging. For the sake of security, we have, as you should be able to see here, the fingerprint scanner, which is combined in our case with face unlock. Now, aside from that, there's a pretty nice setup when it comes to the connectivity. I'm talking about 5G. I'm also talking about the fact we're getting a Wi-Fi 6, also Bluetooth 5.2, and pay attention, it's a Bluetooth 5.2 actually with LDAC support and APTX, APTX HD. We have a NFC for payments, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, Beidou, and Navic for navigation. USB-C 2.0 is a port at the bottom and dual nano SIM card slots. Speaking of dual stuff, we have dual stereo speakers here, one at the bottom and the other one is most likely definitely the earpiece here at the top side. So stereo speaker dual setup. Now I think it's time to finally address the cameras. I'm going to start with the punch hole here at the top left side. It integrates the 32 megapixel shooter and luckily we have quite the sensor, Sony IMN IMX615, a pretty solid sensor for a 32 megapixel camera which arrives with electronic image stabilization and full HD video capture. Going on the back side, this camera module feels and looks a lot like the one from the OnePlus 9 series. It includes a main 50 megapixel camera with a 6P lens, optical image stabilization which is a bit of a shocker and f1.88 aperture. I should also mention it has a Sony sensor. Um, I should actually try to remember it, something like Sony IM IMX766. It's found on the Oppo Find X3 Pro and the Oppo Reno 6 Pro Plus from China. So a solid pedigree for this 50 megapixel sensor with optical image stabilization. Then we have the 8 megapixel ultra wide camera with a generous angle around 119 degrees and also the dual LED flash here plus the smaller 2 megapixel camera, it's a mono lens and most likely with aid you with your bokeh portrait needs. And we also have um, a combination of phase detection autofocus and continuous autofocus, triggering multi autofocus, plus we have 4K uh, 30 frames per second video capture. The interface is pretty much as we left it on the OnePlus 9 series, not much has changed, we have a special AI mode here for AI photo enhancement. We have the more section with ultra resolution, time lapse, slow mo, expert, dual view, movie, and panorama. We have the portrait. We have the video. And you can also use AI here, AI video enhancement, which is useful, especially if the light isn't helping you too much. Here you can select the resolution. 4K only happens in 30 frames per second, while full HD can happen in 60 or 30 frames per second. And we also have a night mode. And uh, aside from that, a night tripod mode. And from what I've heard, I'm going to have to look it up, a special night portrait mode, which should be hidden here somewhere. Now, aside from that, uh, we're running here on a special uh, Android 11 with Oxygen OS 11.3 on top of it. And let's actually check it out. You can see here the version of the CPU, the Android version, and uh, that should be pretty much it and oxygen os 11.3 now aside from that i should also mention that we have hdr real-time video capture and the cpu inside this handset is a 6 nanometer tsmc chip with arm a 78 cores and a special algorithm for gaming actually the reason why this processor is special is the fact that the whole ai thing applies for the screen you saw before two ai options for the display we have some AI features related to the battery consumption, AI features related to gaming, and resource management. So a lot of AI applied here. Aside from that, Oxygen OS is the typical approach we already know. Uh, we have a dark mode, we have nearby share, a zen mode, screen recorder, and also uh, a gaming area of the device. It's called Games. It's basically an app, and it has some boosts and tools to amplify your gaming experience. And believe it or not, it requires some permission to work with your items. Aside from that, we have the Zen mode, as I mentioned before, and also an always-on display. And uh, OnePlus is, promising, is, is promising, us, promising us two years of updates for Android and three years of security updates. 
My first impression about the phone is that it will definitely end up as a powerhouse. I've already done some benchmarks and I can tease you with the fact that uh, it can definitely beat quite a few 2020 flagships. Keep in mind 2020, not 2021. Uh, it can probably take on some of those, but only some as you're going to learn in the full review. Now, before the full review, I'm going to leave you with this unboxing. You saw what's inside the box. First impression, easy to handle with a bright screen, which is pretty crisp and expecting a lot from its uh, processor and main camera with optical stabilization. We'll be back with more soon. Bye bye.